we've got some catching up to do. Um, last time I filmed it was Thursday and um, I can't even remember what I did on Thursday. I think I just had a quiet day at home. And then I was aiming to film on Friday, but Friday just absolutely ran away with me. It was the day that I couldn't be at home. So I went to my mum's, had a therapy session, met Ben for lunch, did some editing, picked up the kids from school. And then I took them swimming for the first time ever on my own. And they loved it. They had a fantastic time. Even I enjoyed it. And then we had a uh, tea in the restaurant um, uh, at my, my gym is like a, a golf club. He's supposed to be in a timeout. They uh, haven't been playing very well today. So they're having some separate time. Um, so yeah, took them swimming. It was really, really great. It was a big, big step for me. I've not um, been swimming. I've, I went swimming on holiday, but we had our own private pool. And I took them swimming at centre parks, um, which was hard, but it was it was good at the time because it there was just like just surrounded by families and mums and dads and kids, and it just didn't feel like I was being looked at or judged or anything. Um, but at my gym, it's different because there's a lot of a lot of people with body types that um, I struggle to, not to compare myself to. So I've just not had the confidence to go swimming yet at a health club and I'm so glad I did because it was old ladies and families because it's a golf club the average age of the clientele is quite a bit older it's just like rich old people <laughs> and it's lovely it's so nice to be around so I'm really really glad I did it because now I'm like oh this is brilliant it took up three hours of our time um the kids had great fun they went to sleep great afterwards because they were knackered they have their dinner, I don't have to cook. And yeah, and if I do it on a you know late Friday afternoon again, Mr. Penrose can come and join us after swimming for his tea as well. Um so yeah, it was just brilliant. And then but during all that I just had no time to film. I did take a few clips, but it just wasn't just life got in the way. I wanted to film, but I was just too busy. And then the same kind of happened yesterday. Yesterday I woke up with a very, very bad headache. Like I've never woken up with a headache unless I was hungover. Definitely wasn't hungover. Very strong front of the head, very wincy, painful headache. Um, so I took some painkillers, a few different types, and that seemed to hold it off, which is good because I took Jeff to a party. And in the afternoon, I went with my mum and my sister to visit my grandma, who's in hospital at the moment. She's okay, she had a fall a while ago, and then she had a bad reaction to her um, pain medication, and she just needed um, she just needed a bit of care. Um, but she'll be coming home soon, and yeah, we just went to visit her. So obviously wasn't gonna film that, wasn't gonna film the children's party, because it was in somebody else's house. And then by the time I got home, I was, you know, I'd barely seen my husband since he got back from his trip. So we just had a quiet evening on the sofa, had a takeaway. We went down a YouTube rabbit hole of watching people in rainforests and woodlands build like primitive shelters and houses and stuff. And so fascinating. It was amazing. <laughs> and then we went to bed. And so today is Sunday. So barely any knitting has happened. However, yesterday I did cast on the mittens for my daughter's teacher. And I'm gonna show you those more in depth later because all I've done so far is the cuff. And I am planning on working a bit more on those today. So once I've got a bit more to show you, well, I'll you know go a bit more in depth with it. But overall, there's not been a huge amount of uh, knitting. So we're busy. And then this morning, I woke up, I still had a a bit of a headache so I've taken some more tablets I didn't get much sleep last night because the tablets I was taking yesterday had caffeine in them so my my, my body was tired but my mum was just like la, 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 la. so yeah not much sleep so this morning I've done nothing just absolutely nothing spent quite a lot of time in bed just chilling out had a coffee just yeah taking it really slow this morning but now I'm ready to get up and like get on with my day. I just had some lunch and brunch. Putting a, a face on, even though I'm not really going anywhere today. 
I do find um, getting up and doing my makeup if I feel like it. Not every time. I tend to be quite makeup free at the weekend, but I felt like it today. Put in like getting dressed, not just like shoving comfies on, but actually getting dressed definitely helps me kind of be a bit more present, a bit more active. Um, I mentioned, I talked about this briefly on my Instagram actually, I saw a reel that was all about how for those of us who struggle um, to find the mo motivation for self-care and hygiene, things like showering, brushing your teeth at different times in my life I've really struggled with. Um, I never really understood why and I do now but now that I am understanding myself better, I'm f I feel like I've finally accepted that taking care of myself in that way and also taking care of my home in that way cleaning and tidying doing that act of service for my future self even though my present self doesn't really want to is a powerful thing and you know most people that just comes completely naturally like my husband can't function with that I hate like when he gets up the first thing he has a shower and he can't function but I will happily wait until like <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> until I have a shower like our limits are obviously different but I now know that yeah taking care of myself in that way is a good thing in the long run and I'm much better at it now and it doesn't feel like such a chore um that was a really random tangent so this down here my makeup drawer is one of my jobs today I'm feeling very organizey I went to TK Maxx the other day and I picked up some like storagey organization -y bits and I would like to implement them. Like I haven't got like huge amounts of sorting to do, but there are some areas where the lack of organization is making those routines, those self-care things, like putting my makeup on, like putting the washing away, like emptying the dishwasher, that kind of thing. It's making those tasks even harder. For example, I want to do my eyebrows. Instead of just being like, there's my eyebrow thing, I just had to root around for it for 10 seconds. I know that doesn't sound like much, but in the morning when I'm trying to get ready to get the kids out and I'm against the clock, like that can really make a difference to my like overwhelm levels. Yes, it doesn't give me that much time, but not having to be like, oh, where's my eyebrow thing is like better for my mental health. So my makeup drawers is like probably the first thing I'm going to do because it's quite a small one. I've actually gained quite a lot of beauty products since I last organised in here which was a couple of months ago when I decorated. I've never had a dressing table in my life and mine has just got two small drawers one of which I put all like my hair tools in and one I put all my like everyday makeup but I realised that I am and then any spares any extras that I don't use that often but want to keep like self tan or hairspray are in a basket in my wardrobe on top of my drawers but that runneth over, that's a mess, and I don't use my hair tools that regularly, I normally just let my hair dry naturally, like this, I have my hair coloured, so I try to use as little heat as possible, but I do occasionally, but it's not something that I use all the time, so that drawer is being wasted, and I've ended up putting like nail varnish in it and stuff as well, so I want to take the hair stuff out, and spread out the products better, get rid of anything that I'm not using, um, and organize it at the moment I've just got like face stuff and skin stuff now I would like to have like moisturizers skin stuff eye stuff lip stuff so it's much easier to access and therefore my mornings will be easier and then ultimately what needs to happen because I'm gearing myself up to now decorate Jeff's bedroom um, because our wardrobes are really poorly designed, there's a big empty cavity here. Um, so I've just got like a, a random Ikea chest of drawers in there. And they've got a chest of drawers in, or Jess got a chest of drawers in his room that was Penny's changing table when she was little. It was like a drawer unit with a removable changing thing on the top. And it's much bigger. They had it because when they were sharing that room, they needed all their clothes. Now it's just Jeff. Half those drawers are empty and my chest of drawers is too small. Like I'm stuffing my PJs in there and like my socks overfloweth. So I want to swap um, the chest of drawers in Jeff's room and make use of it myself. But that's a slightly bigger job that I might not tackle today. But it's something that needs to be done again in the run up to decorating Jeff's bedroom. I'm not entirely sure when that's going to happen. It's quite a big job and I've got to be in the right mood for it. So who knows, it could be part of July, could be in the next few weeks, I don't know. The other area I would like to organise is my kitchen 
uh, not kitchen, bathroom cabinet. Um, it is just two big, deep shelves in our like sink unit. And it is really hard to keep it organised. There's so many like little bits of toiletries and towels and just stuff. And it just gets so messy. Really bad use of the space. It's not very clean in there either, which is annoying. And I don't really have anywhere else in my bathroom to store towels. Um, so I, I want to be able to just like completely clear out the bottom deck of that so I can nicely fold my towels and put them in there. And then just have toiletries and stuff on the top. So I bought some more um, storage caddies for in there. Like just some, some uh, solid plastic ones that I can put through the dishwasher when I need to like clean and sort out in there. And I think those two little organisational jobs are going to have a huge difference on my day-to-day -day life. There are some kitchen cupboards that need sorting, but one of them is my baking drawer. So it's not urgent. I'll do that when I'm procrastinating on something else. Like my Tupperware drawer. Like I did the important cupboard sort out quite recently. Like the cupboard of doom, the cupboard of junk. Like they've all been sorted recently. And they're all nicely organised and labelled and stuff. And... That's been really good. But then the ultimate thing that really needs sorting out and organising is Jeff's bedroom. Because he's got a big, the same wardrobe as me, but on the opposite side, which is full of uh, unworn clothes and toys and baby stuff. And his room itself is just... We put a desk in there that was in Penny's room. Just to kind of give him a trial run before we get him his own proper desk because this is like an old wooden vintage desk and it's tricky to open the drawers and the gap where your legs go is too small for a standard size chair and um, it's just not very practical but so we'll put it in there for now because it needs to come out of P's room and it's just been a mess since we put it in just paper everywhere pens with lids off everywhere and it's really really bad and he seems to be incapable of all keeping his stuff organised he will tidy it if I like badger him to but I'm going to say to him like look I'm not going to all this effort and decorating your room and getting you this desk with all this storage and pens and stuff if you're not going to take care of it so I'd quite like to get him involved in the sorting out of his room and in the decorating of his room obviously I'm going to do the painting but I think it's important for him that he doesn't just come home one day and there's a beautiful room there waiting for him. Um, I think it's important as he gets older that he learns like the time and effort you have to put into stuff and it'll be nice to do it with him. So yeah, that's going to happen soon. I can feel myself wanting to do it. I've already got his new bed. I've already got his paint. Um, it just needs to be done. The main thing that stopped me doing that is um, my energy levels. I've like just had none recently and it's been so erratic that I've just not been able to. Okay, one more thing. Let's crack on with the day. The great yellow sun is reflecting in your deep blue eyes that day has begun you spin around you spin around you laugh to yourself and i see you shine in every color resting your head in my arms you sing something else i just quickly wanted to mention now i'm dressed was this candle that i showed in the last episode i've had this candle for ages but it got put away in my yarn stash and I only recently re-found it when I sorted out my yarn stash. I also heard lovely, oops sorry, um, Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. <laughs> sorry Ruth, sorry if I insulted you Penny. No, 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 no. Quiet play in your room please. It did come with a beautiful like lid on it but I don't know what I've done with it and this is the Handmade with Love love knitting candle by aurabeads.co.uk and she did send me this for free to try and i was an awful influencer i forgot about it not that i'm an influencer who do i even think i am <laughs> but i was very bad and forgot about it and i'm gutted that i did because it smells stunning 
I love nothing more than a citrusy menthol candle. My favourite favourite is like an autumn candle. But anything citrusy, and this is wild orange peppermint eucalyptus, and it has a crystal inside. And the idea is that it, it so it has a carnelian crystal for positive focus and energy while you are knitting. And I have burnt it whilst I was knitting, but then also just in the evening because it just smells so lovely. I can't see the crystal yet. I've burned through quite a lot of it. But uh, I'll let you know if I find it. So yeah, I'm so sorry it took me ages to share this, but it really is truly beautiful. And I am pretty sure you can still get them. <laughs> My goodness what a day I have been possibly my most productive self ever I was procrastinating over sorting out a makeup drawer oh it's in my eye oh. my headache is back and I can feel it right behind this eye which is currently a bit gunky and I've noticed I've got a weird little rash above my eyebrows. Look, can you see? It's there in the light. How weird is that? Might be completely unrelated, but who knows? Either way, the headache is back. And then I, my eyes look really weird. They look different. I'm tired. Yeah, I was procrastinating starting my makeup sort out. And I was on Instagram and I came across a, a reel by someone called I think it's The Centered Life and she has ADHD and she creates resources for helping you deal with like your tasks and um, productivity and stuff and I was really inspired by it so I made myself a little tracker and I thought well you know I made my tracker for my big love cardigan and it worked so so well maybe this will be helpful here so I drew myself some little blobs <laughs> Ta da and they're all coloured in. And I was saying to myself, do a job, colour a blob. <laughs> to colour a blob, you must do the job. <laughs> and at first I felt a little bit silly doing it. But honestly, oh my goodness, the little like, like burst of dopamine you get from colouring in that blob. And I was getting the kids to choose them. Obviously they saw what I was doing. Like, what's going on, what's going on? And um, they even chipped in with some of the jobs. We're not quite at the age yet where we're like chores, but as I mentioned earlier, I am getting to the point now where I want Jeff to start taking a little bit more responsibility for his surroundings and his belongings and stuff. And I think he quite enjoyed the hoovering. Um, but yeah, the kids would choose one at random and I would just do whichever one they did. And it just kind of took away that, what shall I do next kind of thing. And I broke each room down as well. It was like tidy, Hoover, and then in the kitchen it was like white surfaces and in the bathroom it was like clean the loo and I put lots on and I also put on organise my desk and organise my knitting stuff um, just as like you know little bonuses if I if I finish everything else and I didn't plan to do it all today at all I thought I'll do as much as I can today and whatever's left on it tomorrow because Monday is job day um, but I've done them all <laughs> And I had so much fun. Honestly, I didn't look at my phone for four hours. I listened to my audio book. I've been moving my body. I am freaking tired. My goodness. Um, and now Mr. Penrose is cooking the tea. He did some DIY. Had a little accident when he electrocuted himself. <laughs> Don't get me started. Um, yeah, he's done a little bit of DIY. Mainly some painting. Some bits that needed second coats and just touch-ups here and there which is really nice and so he's cooking tea I'm gonna put the kids to bed in a minute and then I'm gonna have a very quiet evening 
I'm very, very tired and I think it's a very good idea that I go to bed early tonight if this headache has come back. So I did want to just quickly show you something knitting related before I sign off for the day, though I'm probably going to film tomorrow as well and put it in one um, video because I feel like this video could do with it a little bit more. And tomorrow I'll be doing the big food shop with Penny in the morning and then once we're home, we're home. There are no builders, there are no carpenters, it's just me and Pete quiet relaxing day and I'm basically just going to knit until I pick Jeff up from school so I'll probably catch up with you again tomorrow afternoon with some proper nitty content but I didn't want to leave you hanging on the old uh, mittens so this was the yarn that I chose I show you I showed you it in the skein this is a John Alban base hand dyed botanically by wool matters and it's stunning it's called tulip and it's just it makes me think of rhubarb and custard. It's just orange and pink and yellow and it's so beautiful. Um, and in the end, I decided to hold this double with this as well, which is Lang Lace in the shade Coral, which I use for my souffle. And this is a super fine lace weight. It's really, really thin, so it doesn't really add much to it. But it's just the perfect match. It just brings it all together. Um, and I decided to do the worsted weight world's simplest mittens. That's a pattern by Tin Can Knits. It's just a basic mitten and you get fingering weight, DK, worsted and chunky. And I thought, what if I do worsted weight? They'll, they'll knit up really quick. And I've done the cuff so far. So I'll give you a little close up. I'll try and stretch it out a bit. And it's definitely subtle because I'm holding the two strands that kind of tones down the variegation in it because um you've got two colors happening at once and sometimes the two strands like align and you get a big streak of like just orange and you can see it but also because it's rib that kind of disguises it a little bit as well and then the mohair will also tone it down a little bit um, so when I'm in the stockinette hand you're going to be able to see it much much more which is why I kind of wanted to wait to show you but and I feel like my camera isn't doing it justice either IRL it's stunning it's beautiful like I think it's really unique and just special so I'm probably going to work on these tonight um I was considering doing some more of my um MCAL socks but I think I'll wait till I'm at home alone to do that a second so I'm going to sign off for now, but I'm not going to end the vlog here. I'm going to catch up with you again tomorrow. But for now, it's time for me to eat my tea, knit a little bit and go to bed. So I hope you all had a lovely weekend and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. To every day is a struggle in the strife. Don't you agree With beating hearts We're still alive There comes a time When all you have Is who you love afternoon just about and I've uh, had a super busy morning well actually no not not busy but like our normal Monday morning Penny and I go to the cafe and do the food shop come home put the food shop away sort out the house and I'm just doing the washing which once upon a time I said was my least favorite job most hated couldn't stand it but I don't mind it anymore <laughs> but I don't love it like who loves it some people love it but i don't but it doesn't also, also fill me with dread anymore <laughs> i think a lot of that as well was to do with school uniform um because like obviously jeff has has to have his school uniform clean and washed so what that meant was i was getting i got pushed into a habit of getting it all done at the weekend because it had to be all ready for Monday. That was also good, like, it's nice to start the week to have your full selection of clothes, right? Um, though, Jeff obviously was only at school for two days last week, so I didn't actually do a big wash yesterday. 
and then obviously Ben got home from his trip so he had a full load of washing to go through and yeah there's just quite a lot um I've only got half of it here I've only got dark washing but that's okay I don't feel overwhelmed so a little bit of a catch up let's start with my gloves I've got a bit of a sad tale to tell here's the progress on um the first mitten now i think i'm ready to start decreasing and this is something i've noticed about the world's simplest mitten pattern by tin can knits before now, it's a free pattern so i can talk about it in detail if i need to um i always i made these for penny last year and i had to reduce the hand length and the thumb length and i think i need to do the same now i've chosen the perfect hand width going down a size wouldn't have been right but i've still got like half an inch to go before I even start decreasing on these. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a quick look at the pattern and see how many rows the decreases are and then check my row gauge and figure out how much more length that's gonna add in the, in the did I say toe decreases? <laughs> in the like finger decreases um, and then see, because I think, you know, if this was a foot and I was at the end of the little toe, I'd be decreasing now. So yeah. Just a heads up with that pattern. I think the lengths are a tiny bit too long, but obviously everyone's different. I think I've got pretty average hands. So, however, there is a slight problem with the yarn. And it's not a problem with the yarn, it's a problem with me. <laughs> you know, yesterday I mentioned I had these funny little bumps on my eyebrows. Well, I think I found the culprit. So not only have I got like the slight rash on my eyebrows now, but my scalp is itchy, my neck is itchy, and I've been a bit wheezy as well. And I racked my brains, I thought through everything I'd eaten, no new beauty products, no new foods, the only new thing in the past two days has been that yarn. So it's either the fibres, though I have used the fibres before, I think it's slightly more likely to be what was used to dye it because that can happen quite often. I know recently Amy Palco became allergic to one specific colorway um, of a yarn that she uses a lot. So I know that can happen. Now, I think I didn't immediately think of the yarn because it's not on my hands. What I think is happening is obviously when I'm working with it, the fibers are released into the air and I'm breathing in those fibers and I'm reacting to it. Um, I messaged um, the owner of the yarn company just to get some information really just to ask her what she used in case anything particular stood out I thought it'd be like oh I use this for the orange this for the pink but obviously it's a lot more complicated than that um, and there are a lot of ingredients in there and I don't know very much about any of them but I've got the list of them now so if I do ever react to a yarn again I can like compare and so I'll see if there's one particular thing I know I'm allergic to she very kindly offered to send me into this game, which was so kind. I said no, because it's obviously not the yarn's fault at all. It's my body. I'm allergic to lots of things. <laughs> so it was only a matter of time. Um, but she did say she used um, powdered dyes for this colourway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish. I've had an antihistamine now and I've stopped feeling wheezy and I've stopped feeling itchy. So I think it's working. I'm going to finish this mitten and then I'm going to wash the yarn. I'm going to um, put it on my swift and turn it into a skein wash it and then let it dry rewind it and work the second mitten don't think there'll be a huge difference in color can't imagine there will i'll just wash the first mitten an extra time if i have to oh my gosh can you hear that music i'm gonna get demonetized <laughs> penny's watching frozen um so yeah that's such a shame because it's like oh it's such a beautiful yarn but what can you do there's not much you can do so what i'll probably do is finish the finish this pair of mittens and then any leftovers i'll have i'll i'll donate to a friend if they want them um so yeah it's a bit of a shame but i am really enjoying working on them and i made something that i want to show you last night i made myself a woo, mitten tracker am i going to be able to show you this very well oh my god did you see i made that i did that myself woo. so yeah i've done five pairs of mittens 
and I've put like a little little notes bit and I'm basically going to print it off next time I'm at my mum's and use it to track all the mittens that I want to make for Christmas and it includes this pair as well and then I will, there's four pairs I'd like to make for Jeff's teachers and then I can write down in a little note section like how many rows I do for the cuff, how many for the hand, blah blah blah, how much, how many grams of yarn I need for each one just so I'm not like constantly rechecking that information. Um, I might just colour it in within Procreate for now because I don't think I'm going to be able to print this off anytime soon and I really want to colour in. But I could do both. There's definitely something a lot more satisfying about colouring it in like with a crayon, with like that physical thing than digital. But this way, like it was much easier and quicker for me to create the page and I can, oh, I probably wouldn't reuse really this one, but I'm going to see if I can put this up on my website as a free download. <gasps> Who is it? Me. Can't see you. There she is. What are you wearing today, baby? Rainbow, Rainbow sprinkles. Rainbow sprinkles. This is the Monday sweater by Petite Knit. And the yarn is... Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 don't touch the camera. <laughs> Sorry to be a The yarn was a random fingering weight yarn I had and I the Rainbow Sprinkles. <laughs> The sprinkle yarn is by Cheshire Hand Dyed in the Colourway Popsicle Mommy, and it's the Surrey Alpaca Base. Of course, a bit of a stir with that one, we did. Mama, Papa. Mama, Papa! She likes to play the bit in Frozen when Anna like gets hit by the magic and might be dead. She just likes to play that bit over and over again. So yeah, I've gone a little bit tracker crazy, <laughs> seeing as it seems to be really working for my mind. I've got two more to show you. <laughs> These are little hand-drawn ones. I did this one today. This is my daily jobs tracker. And obviously we've got days of the week. And on the top, I've just got every room in the house. So like bedroom, kids room, kitchen, blah, blah, blah. And the idea is that I have a morning tidy and an evening tidy. Obviously look. I've done my morning tidy. And then tonight I'll do it again. I'll colour in the bottom half of the square. I feel like this could be a little bit more fun. I think this might be nice with stickers. Hmm. But the idea is, yeah, it's just to kind of help me keep motivated. And honestly, every time I do a little bit of colouring in, it actually makes me smile. It's, it's honestly, it just works for me. I've tried lists. I've never been a list person looking at that long list of just words and being like, no, nah, like, no, it just, no. But this is perfection. So yeah, I feel like I can make this a little bit prettier. And again, I'd like to do a digital one. So then I can like print them out like repeatedly and I can like double side them. And I think stickers would be really, really fun. There's a beautiful shop in Leamington that does beautiful stickers. So I might go and have a little look there tomorrow. I do need to buy some more organizational stuff as well. So that's what we'll do. And then my other one that I've done, is on the other page, yes, it's this way, is I've done a week task. Now this isn't, this isn't like stuff to be done every week. This is just this week specific. And I had a little bit more fun with this one. And I did flowers, like this. <laughs> and each one of them is like a bigger task that I would like to get done. And it doesn't really matter if I do them all in that one week. It's just, you know, something to keep the motivation going. And I did flowers as well, because then if I only manage to do like a little bit of the task, I can do like a little bit. So it's like a progress tracker as well as a like to-do list. And like the big flower is the biggest job. So that's tidy the spare room because it is an absolute bomb site down there but even this it's like not putting the pressure on myself to do it on a specific day and do the whole thing at once makes it feel so much more attainable for me if i said to myself right you're going to try this berry on wednesday wednesday will come around and it will be the last thing i want to do and then there's smaller ones like plant admin tidy the terrace which again is a, a quick job and um, sort the art covered out and I also filled in the gaps with little bees and there are seven bees and each bee is a glass of water and it's so to make sure that every day this week I drink a big glass of water because <laughs> that's something I'm really really bad at is keeping hydrated 
when I am like particularly involved in a task or something, I just forget to eat and drink all the time and then all of a sudden I'm thirsty or I'm hungry. I also struggle with my, what's it called? Oh, I think it's called intonation or something like that. It's like your sixth sense, it's like a sense that we don't really get taught about and it's like being able to hear your internal cues. So for example, I will quite often not realize I'm cold until I'm freezing or I'll not realize I'm hot until I'm like sweating or I'll not realize I'm thirsty until I'm parched. I'll not realize I'll need the loo until I'm busting, that kind of thing. My body just struggles with those like signals and interpreting them and stuff. So just by having this reminder every day to drink one big glass of water, I think is a really good place to start. And I would like to work up to a healthy habits tracker as well. So similar to the like cleaning the rooms and stuff, but just doing things like breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, water, um shower hair wash like all those basic things basically the kind of thing you do for a toddler when your ability to main to care for yourself is such a difficult thing for you to do because of the way your brain works sometimes it is a little bit like well you know <laughs> let's give the guidance that you give to a child and it, honestly it's so incredibly helpful i've i've heard so many times that neurodivergent people can respond really really well to routine particularly autistic people and i always kind of didn't feel like that would work for me because i find like the moment i tell myself i have to do something i won't do it Just gonna shut, shut the door again <laughs> and i also like the flexibility of deciding what i do and when um I, like I've never been a particular fan of like booking the kids in to a particular group or whatever that's the same time every week because I'm like what if I don't want to go that day and I think a lot of that came from my depression because like quite often I would I'd not be physically capable of doing anything on a particular day and then I would add on like the guilt of like missing out on the class type thing but that's i don't think that's the kind of routine it's referring to like i don't need to get up at the same time every day i don't need to eat my dinner at the same time every day like timings wise i'm all right but bringing in some kind of regularity and repetition to my daily life <clears throat> i think has got the potential to be really really good for me and i got a hint at that like just before jeff started school last year i was dreading it i was dreading the having to get up at the same time be at the same place to be that organized to make sure we've got all these things all day every day and it actually like transformed my life having that little bit of routine in my day every day was fantastic it keeps me on track obviously it's difficult on the days where i don't feel like i can get out of bed but i haven't had so many of those days recently um but overall i think it's good for me so i'm gonna roll with that it is likely that I'll get, I'll be enjoying this for the next few weeks and then it'll fizzle out and I won't do it again. <laughs> a similar thing happened, I had this like full nighttime skincare routine that I did every night and I absolutely loved it for a couple of weeks and I was just like, meh. <laughs> again, that's just my, that's just who I am. I do still do some of my skincare things but it's not like a religious routine every single night so that's just the phase of life I'm in at the moment. So I now need to finish folding the wash in and I'm going to finish this second mitten and then wash the yarn and I'll probably, well I'll have to work on something different whilst that yarn is drying again. I may do my second sock for the sock cal because it's Monday but equally I might work on my son's jumper a little bit. I'm really really enjoying that at the moment. It's such a lovely mindless um, project and seeing P in her Monday sweater today they're gonna look so cute together because even though hers is like rainbow speckle and his is tweed, they're both still a white base with like flecks of colour. And like I didn't really realise that. So when when they're together, I look really cute. I've also got quite a lot of that rainbow speckle alpaca left, so I think I might use that for another pair of mittens. I think I'm just not gonna bother waiting to find out like what yarns, what colours my um since teachers like and just use the yarns I'm excited to use because that's going to make it a lot more fun as well isn't it like um I enjoyed making all the gloves last year but I did have to make three pairs of green gloves and a pair of yellow gloves which I wasn't so excited about whereas the pair I made for my sister which was in beautiful pink speckly colorway like they weren't one of my favorites so yeah I'm gonna go more for what I like and if they don't like it they don't have to wear them 
or they can gift them. Last year, I put a little tag on all of the handmade yarn saying, if you are not comfortable with animal fiber, either like physically or morally, please feel free to re-gift or recycle um, or donate or something like that. I wanted to make it clear to the people receiving these gifts that they didn't have to keep them if they didn't want to. I'd much rather they were given to someone who would use and appreciate them than for them to sit in their drawer forever not being used and eventually chucked away. So that's what I'll do this time as well. Oh, I feel like that's been very, very, very chatty. Anyway, I hope you're having a lovely Monday morning and I'll catch up with you again later. And of all I should have done It's so beautiful. I'm so gutted this yarn is not liked by my body because my eyes think it's wonderful. He's <laughs> so nice. So I thought I'd um, talk you through just a few of the things I have done differently within the World's Simplest Mittens pattern. Again, it's a free pattern so I can share all these things with you. So I ended up adding just half an inch rather than an extra inch to the length well I didn't add to the length it actually took half an inch away from the length and it feels just right I feel like they'll probably grow a little bit with washing and that will be really beautiful the first thing I do differently is I kitchen at the end in the instructions it tells you to just thread through the stitches and pull and that's fine but I personally don't like the feel of that on my finger and when there's that little round hole I find sometimes that hole can work loose with um, wear and you end up with a little, little round hole at the end of your mitten. I just think a little bit of Kitchener, even though it's only like four stitches in this case, is just that bit nicer and sometimes I'll even do cent centre double decreases so I get a, a point at the end, a bit more of a point. Now these are quite pointy. I feel like it might be quite nice to maybe go a little bit longer on the hand and decrease less and then have a bit of a flatter top. Might do that for my next pair. And then for the thumb, I do the pickup slightly different. In the pattern, it tells you to put your stitches back on the needle, knit across them, then pick up a stitch from the gusset and continue. I find that leaves holes. So instead, what I do is I pick up that extra, that pick up the one stitch you're supposed to from the gusset first before I knit across the round but I also pick up three stitches rather than one obviously it depends on the size you're knitting or are they all the same I think it's all pick up one either way I pick up an extra stitch before I knit my thumb stitches and then an extra stitch at the end of the round as well and then immediately decrease them on the next round so it would be um knit one knit two together knit two, two stitches remain slip slip knit and then we're done um, and that just creates absolutely zero holes not a single one and i think it looks really neat really beautiful and i just when i weave my end in here i just make sure to do it really thoroughly reinforcing that kind of thumb bit because this is the bit that will get the most wear and I did the thumb to pattern in the end as well. I didn't have to shorten it at all because there's only one decrease round. It is pull through on the thumb. So you do get that little circle on the thumb. But I think that looks quite cute. And I think Kitchener would be weird here. And it's not like you get much poking through there. So there you go. Mitten one done. Hope she appreciates it. I don't know what I'm going to do the second one. I think I might just get straight on it. 
I just cast it on straight away. Don't know if I can be bothered to wash the yarn. I'm sorry, I'm very blown out. What's going on here? I don't know if I can be bothered to wash the yarn, go through all that. My reaction to it's not been that bad, but antihistamines are working, so I might just like get it done and then cake up what's ever left and see if anyone sit. <laughs> so there you go. So beautiful. I think these are going to be really, really enjoyable as Christmas gift knits. Now that I know exactly how many cuff stitches, how many gusset increases, how many hand stitches, how many thumbs, not stitches, rows. Um, it's just going to be commit committed to memory. And it's time to get Jeff. It's just going to be committed to memory. I don't have to check the pattern and I can like have loads of fun with all the different yarns that I've got. Maybe I'll, instead of doing this second mitt, I will uh, do another mitt of a different colour because I do remember that in episode one, my goal was to finish my husband's sweater, finish my mum's socks and then finish one Christmas gift for this year. So that will be a pair of mittens. So maybe I'll just one of those on get ahead of the game anyway time to get jeff but with that i'm also going to round it up here because otherwise i think this video might be a bit long so thank you so much for joining me i hope you've had a lovely start to your week and i will be filming again tomorrow i'll probably get a video out of a whole day tomorrow I, I like doing two days into one it makes it a lot easier for me it's a lot more flexible it's a lot less time editing but i do also really like doing like a whole day like a whole in-depth day so i'll probably do that tomorrow so yeah see you in the next one bye bye here she is you come to <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing on that hers hi guys what should i do next <laughs> hi guys what should i do next I was making my bed. Oh, were you? Were you pretending to be a YouTuber in your bedroom? I mean, that's adorable. <laughs> Baby. Sweetie. <laughs> Darling. Benny.